morning. Welcome to a special college football pregame edition of Inside South Florida. I'm Melissa Marrero. And I'm Kurt Kamenez. Coming up, we've got kickoff coming for you right here on the CW South Florida. It's a Sunshine State showdown between the FIU Panthers and the FAU Owls, Mel, as they renew their annual rivalry game. That's right. We're at the beautiful FAU Stadium to set the stage for Shula Bowl 18. Shula Bowl. Coming up, we'll be breaking down the big matchups on the field and also on the sidelines between these two big-name coaches, Butch Davis of FIU and Lane Kiffin of FAU. We'll hear from both coaches and their key players. We're also touring both schools for a special on-campus Shula Bowl edition of Foodie Fix. Mm, yummy. That and a whole lot more is coming up on this special pre-game Shula Bowl edition of Inside South Florida. But first, let's hear from the coaches. The Shula Bowl in and of itself is a, you know, it's a highly competitive type of game, but it has extra meaning, obviously, because we're both in Conference USA, we're both in the exact same division, everybody's trying to win as many conference games as you can, one, obviously, to get into bowl games and potentially put yourself in a chance to play for the conference championship, so, uh, and all these kids, you know, one of the things about two schools that are 75, 80 miles apart, most of these kids played against each other in high school, they played on the same team with each other, so I think that even raises the rivalry. I expect them to play really hard. It's a rivalry game. Records don't matter and you know statistically these guys have done really well on offense throughout the year um, and on defense I mean they're ahead of us in a lot of stats so um, you know get ready for a really exciting game and, and you know going to try to get to 3-0 in this series. You know, Lane's done a good job, and he's had a lot of experience, you know, coaching at Southern Cal, coaching at Tennessee, coaching the Oakland Raiders and stuff. So, you know, you can tell a lot of the things that he's done in a lot of those places he brings to that program. He's a great coach and he's done a lot of great things over his career, and, you know, um, I think it's overlooked what a great job he's done with the program there. We're now inside the FAU locker room, and we are joined by Frank Fort, a South Florida sports broadcasting legend. And Frank is now the host of the Lane Kiffin TV show, Inside the Owlsboro. Frank, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. We're glad to have you guys here. We're excited for the Shula Bowl here on the CW South Florida. And last year with 49-14 FAU, Owls have dominated this series. Do you think that's going to continue tonight? Well, the one thing I will say is in those two particular games since Lane Kiffin's been here, FAU has been able to run the ball more than effectively. We've struggled a lot of times this year with our running game and the offensive line opening holes. So, and that did seem to be, at least so far this season, a little bit of an Achilles heel for FIU. So if FAU can run the ball like they have the past two years, then I think their chances of success go way up. Speaking of running uh, the ball in the running game, there's been kind of an injury bug this year for the Owls at that position, correct? Started with the first game at Ohio State, B.J. Emmons, who uh, played for Lane Kiffin at Alabama as a freshman and then transferred to a junior college, came here to FAU. He broke his foot after two touches against the Buckeyes. Man. So he could be back for the end of the season, but not for this FIU game. Uh, Larry McCammon, who's a freshman from the legendary Hoover, Alabama program, he struggled with injuries, been very productive, especially on the goal line, scored a bunch of touchdowns this year, but he struggled with injuries. We got pretty banged up up at the, uh, the game in Norfolk, Virginia against Old Dominion. So the running back's been kind of a carousel of guys because of the injury bug. Yeah, but this is a rivalry game, right? Everybody gets up for a rivalry yeah, game. Yeah, everybody you hope will be healthy for it. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so we talked about the running back, but for the Owls, you said the running game is key, but it also key is their quarterback and their tight end. Chris Robinson has had a, a breakout year this year as a sophomore. As a redshirt freshman last year, he struggled with decision-making in the passing game. Uh, kind of a one-to-one -one touchdown interception ratio. This year, it's more three-to-one touchdown interceptions, almost closer to four-to-one. So he's made much better decisions with the football, and he's got great security blanket in his tight ends. Not only Harrison Bryant, who will be an NFL draft pick, uh, but fellow senior John Rain, who's a second tight end. They do a lot of 12 personnel, which is two tight ends in the game. And Rain has actually been in the end zone a lot more than Bryant, although Bryant's a leading receiver. But it's sort of that double-headed monster there at tight end for, for FAU. That's uh, a position they depend on very heavily. Something to look out for during the game. What about on the other side of the ball on defense? Who are the guys that the fans out there watching should look out for? Well, look out for the linebackers. Number seven, Rashad Smith, who's from down the Homestead area, uh, Florida City. And Achilles Leroy, who's under six feet. He's like 5'11". If he was 6'2", he'd be playing in the SEC because mm -hmm. he is a missile to the ball. He wears number 36. And then we have a kind of a hybrid defensive end linebacker position that they call the Leo position. Leighton McCarthy, who goes about 220, 225 pounds. Uh, he had 20 sacks as a high school senior. 
So he's a guy that can really get after the quarterback. But our linebackers have been fantastic this year at creating turnovers. And you mentioned earlier Lane Kiffin undefeated in this rivalry. What is it about this rivalry? What is it about the Shula Bowl? Does he circle it on his calendar? What's the deal? You know, when he first got here, I don't think he understood uh, what this rivalry means to the local players here from South Florida. You know, obviously he was uh, with the Alabama Auburn. He was USC, UCLA. And now you come down to a group of five conference, you don't think that those same kind of rivalries exist. But the fact is, for the young men from South Florida who played with and against each other in high school, this game means a lot. And especially when you, you look at how, at the end of the game, the players just run full speed to the trophy to either rip off the, hel the half a helmet of, from the losing team or just carry that trophy around. And I think he's starting to understand what it means to these guys. And, and not only that, now with Lane Kiffin and Butch Davis, you have a premier coaching matchup as well. Yeah, when you look at the, the head coaches in the state of Florida, now for all seven uh, Division I teams, or FBS teams as they say now, I'm old school, I still say Division I, yep. right? Uh, Same there's, here. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of name recognition, and certainly Lane Kiffin's brought a lot of brand recognition to FAU, as Butch Davis has to FIU. It, it'll be a lot of fun to see those two guys on the sidelines tonight. Frank Fort, thank you so much for joining us, and thank I can't you. wait for kickoff. It's going to be great. Yeah. With all this football talk, I'm getting hungry. So we're going to take you through both campuses to check out their food hotspots. We start at FAU's Boca Raton campus. The university has a variety of options, healthy, affordable, ecologically sustainable, and an on-trend dining experience for everyone. We have the Atlantic Dining Hall, which is our main dining hall on campus. We also have the Breezeway Food Court, has a bunch of different restaurants in it, such as Wendy's, Einstein Brothers Bagels, um, Chicken Grill, and we're having two new ones open up later this fall, um, Pollo Tropical and Pizza Hut. We also have a Chick-fil-A on campus. We have the Living Room Theaters, which has a restaurant built in as well. We have Chick-fil-A, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, Subway. If you want something more authentic, head to the pop-up. The food truck is owned by an FAU alum and operated by students. It was opened by my uncle. Um, he tried starting this six years ago and it was turned down on the idea. And then one of the business service directors here called him and was like, hey, do you still want to do this? Um, this is an opportunity for you. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. So we started it last December, uh, trying to get everything together, and we opened in July. They serve just about everything, from tacos and Philly cheese sandwiches to a Jamaican beef pie and burgers. Ever since the pop-up came up, I actually really like this place. But if I were going to pick a favorite, I would probably pick um, the rice bowl. Well, I work at like a sub place, and I like love Philly cheese steaks, so like, I get that like all the time here. And guess what? You can try their food at the stadium during the game. It's cool to see all my friends come through and people that I had class with be like, oh, like, what are you doing here? And it's like, yeah, I, you know, I help, help out around here. So it's, it's just a lot of familiar faces. Coming up, we'll be hearing from both FIU and FAU football players. Plus, we visit the FIU campus for our Panther foodie fix. And I'm at my alma mater of FIU with one of the greatest mascots of all time, Rory, where we're going to have a mascot matchup for the Shula Bowl. That and a whole lot more on Inside South Florida. Welcome back to this special edition of Inside South Florida, college football pregame edition of the Shula Bowl between FIU and FAU. I'm Kirk Kamana. And I'm Melissa Marrero. We're getting closer to kickoff between these two Florida rivals. It's almost time for the matchup, so let's hear from the players. It's something big. I know those guys are coming to play, play their hard outs. Um, it's a game that a few years later down the line, you want to be able to say, yeah, like we won the Shula Bowl three years in a row or this, this, and that. So. It's definitely a big game. It's definitely home. We definitely got to get a W for our fans and family. So we ready to rock and roll. Uh, I've got to say, as I've you know lived down here for a year now, it's been um, you know obviously it's uh, Don Shula is a legend down here, and um, the importance of this game you can tell just from you know the atmosphere on the building and all that stuff. So uh, definitely is going to be a good uh, game this week. Rivalry games are huge, and it doesn't matter who's what the record is of any team or whatever it may be. You have to play hard, and you have to play your heart out to win the game. It's always a pleasure to get that trophy. So you know, we're going to be ready to get it this year. You know, just run off the sideline, grab that thing, run around with it, and cheer. 
to you know just just enjoy it. You know, it's it's a great moment to enjoy. So I feel like this team we deserve it, and we're gonna do everything once we get it. It's always exciting in the Shul Bowl week. You know, face your rival. You know, they always wanna talk junk. We talk junk, whatever. But uh, it's always cool to see that other helmet getting ripped off the trophy. We're here at Ricardo Silva Stadium, home of the Panthers, to get uh, the FIU angle preview of the Shula Bowl. And joining me now is A.J. Ricketts, voice of the Panthers, play-by-play -play announcer. And, of course, last year didn't go too well no. for, uh, for the Panthers in the Shula Bowl. Um, they got run over by FIU. What do you expect this year? Well, hopefully the opposite, right? Yeah. <laughs> right from the FIU side, and you know, certainly different teams, different players, and the same coaches and the same storylines. And you know, Shula Bowl, a lot of South Florida pride on the line, a lot of recruits on, on hand, and it's always going to be a lot of fun on the Shula Bowl Saturday. Right, third matchup in the Shula Bowl between these two big name coaches, yeah. Butch Davis of FIU, Lane Kiffin of uh, FAU. So, what does Butch have to do to finally get a win head to head against Lane in the Shula yeah, Bowl? Yeah, one of the most fun storylines. Both these coaches who have been at the high level of the sport now 56 miles apart up the road to 95 butch I think the biggest thing is the run defense if you talk about you know on the field that's what's hurt FIU in the last two years there's no more Devin Singletary on the FAU sideline which is terrific but they still have a great ground attack it's been a vulnerability for FIU this season so stopping the run that's that's step one and what about on offense for the Panthers is it James Morgan the quarterback or bust I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, James has had some games where he's played well, but the, the ground game has, has been there for him. Anthony Jones, a terrific story last year, injured in a drive-by shooting, a random drive-by shooting, nearly died because of it, him and Mershon Miller, but came back, actually debuted after that injury against FAU. And now this season, he had three straight 100-yard games that had only been done once ever in FIU history. So Anthony Jones, Napoleon Maxwell, Devontae Price, they call him the three-headed monster. If they can get the job done on the ground, James Morgan doesn't have to have a great day. It would be great if he does, though. Yeah, but it's going to be a fun game regardless. Yeah. It's a rivalry game. Um, what's it like calling the game for you, the Shula Bowl? No, it's always, there's a little extra element to it, you know. The, the players are, I think, are always conditioned to say, you know, it's another game on the schedule, but as a broadcaster, I feel I can say, well, it's a little more fun <laughs> than usual. Uh, the, 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 what, what leads up to it, the anticipation, the hype, uh, and the fans, the coaches, there's a lot of elements to this game that, that make it a lot of fun. So looking forward to another Shula Bowl. And let's go back to Butch Davis. It's his uh, third year yep. at the helm. What does he need to do? What does this program need to do? What does he need to do to get it to the next level like he, he did with the Canes? Yeah, I think he's on the right track. You know, recruiting is the lifeblood of any program. That's what he'll say each and every time when he's talking about it. And he's been able to elevate the quality of guys. He wants players coming in that are better than the current players each and every year. And they've certainly made an impact when, they, when they've gotten in here. So if he continues to recruit at this level, obviously this year has had its, its struggles, but still the opportunity to make three straight bowl games is well within sight. That's never been done at FIU, so I think Butch Davis is right on track. Well, to use a Butch-ism, if you will, sure. he always used the term litany. He can ha he can provide a litany of recruits. No one can recruit like Butch Davis. And, right? it's, and it's term he loves to use now is electric. These guys are electric on the field, whether it's Anthony, De Anthony Jones, Maurice Alexander, who's one of the best punt returners in the country. He's got guys that can fly. AJ Ricketts, voice of the Panthers. Thank you so much for joining Appreciate us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have fun uh, calling the game. Oh, I will. It'll be a blast. Earlier, we showed you the food options at FAU's Boca campus. Now we're at FIU. Panther Dining offers 31 different restaurants across the Modesto, Medique, and Biscayne Bay campuses. There are endless options to satisfy your cravings, including chilies, pollo tropical, and jamba juice. But what caught my eye? Vicky Bakery. This is such a Miami staple, and now it's at FIU. I want everything here. <laughs> Do you think it's the perfect fit for campus? I definitely think so, especially with our Hispanic group. Yeah, Latino all the way. So hey, if you're Cuban and you know about Vicky Bakery, you're going to love this. So a lot of our uh, students are Hispanic, so this is the go-to for them. One of the joys of working here in the morning is that you truly see the the emotion that people get when they want to order the coffee and the food and they just get like overly excited. I'm just like, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Vicky Bakery opened about two years ago on campus and it's the morning and afternoon hangout spot for students. A lot of me and my fraternity brothers come here all the time, especially for like the happy hours and you know, definitely come here and the tequeños are amazing and it's just always like a good vibe. We usually take over like a whole section and it's just like my entire like fraternity comes and not just ours, but like almost most of Greek life also comes here. Mascots are a symbolic figure for a sports team, school, or an organization. 
They bring good luck and show team spirit. Usually, mascots are based on an animal or local history native to the school or organization. Today, I'll give you a little history of FAU's mascot Owsley and FIU's Rory. FAU's Owsley emerged in the fall of 2011. Tough, courageous, competitive, and often mischievous, Owsley can be found cheering on the Owls during most home games and sneaking into special events across campus. FIU's Rory was quote-unquote born in 1987. Brave and strong, Rory is usually around campus and at Panthers football and basketball sports games. And on his downtime, he's usually around campus dancing, cheering students on, and more. And with that, the matchup is set, and we are quickly approaching kickoff of the Shula Bowl here between FIU and FAU. But we still have plenty of show to come. We're flying through campus life here at FAU. Go Owls! Plus, class is in session as these two old professors will school you on why this rivalry is called the Shula Bowl. That and much more as Inside South Florida special college football pregame Shula Bowl edition rolls on. Hi, and welcome to a special college football pregame edition of Inside South Florida. I'm Melissa Marrero. And I'm Kurt Kamenez. It's FIU, it's FAU, it's the Shula Bowl, and it's about to kick off right here on the CW South Florida. But why is it called the Shula Bowl anyway? Don't answer, Mal. Don't, because I'm going to have the answer in a bit. But first, Miriam Tapia takes a glimpse of life on campus. So we have hit all the great food spots in both campuses, but have you ever wondered how campus life is in both schools? With FAU's main campus being in Boca Raton and FIU's in Miami, both campuses offer a variety of hangout spots, student clubs, and more. Let's check it out. Founded in 1967, FAU has around 30,000 students enrolled and have six campuses located all throughout South Florida. The Boca Raton location is FAU's main campus and it offers housing, recreational facilities, art galleries, and more. A lot of students hang out in many places around campus. There's a big banyan tree next to the administration building where students hang out. Um, of course, the library and the rec center. And a lot of students gather around the breezeway, which is our center heart of FAU's campus. And FAU has a ton of options for student life. We have over 300 organizations that students can go and get involved in. And we are really close to a lot of nightlife in Fort Lauderdale and Miami. And of course, we're 1.8 miles from the beach, and we're really proud of that as well. FAU is currently going through renovations, so you can expect more campus life and events happening at FAU. Now I'm at Panther Territory, where we're going to check out campus life here at FIU. Founded in 1969, FIU has several centers in South Florida and two campuses. One in North Miami called Biscayne Bay and the main campus in Miami called Modesto Medique Campus. FIU has around 54,000 students enrolled and it offers an assortment of hangout spots and organizations for every student. I used to be a student here not long ago. <laughs> um, it's so much has changed. Uh, tell me, how has FIU you know, student life been? I think it's growing, it's evolving, it's fun. Tell me, tell me about that. It's super exciting because you see so many new students that are coming to our campus and FIU, its dynamics are transforming. And even the campus feel, it's amazing. I mean, you walk through the Graham Center and even from when I started four years ago, there's so many new things on campus. I mean, we're here in Chili's right now, and these renovations are insane. You feel like you're in Wynwood. Like, you are not at FIU. You walk in here, and you're in Wynwood. We have our Vicky Bakery. It's another awesome hangout spot. One of my personal favorites is the library. We have an ongoing joke. We call it Club Lib. Um, and we always know that we go to the second floor, not necessarily to study, but we're doing, like, more social studying. But it's definitely an exciting campus feel how things have just changed over the past few years. MMC currently has 344,000 acres and they're currently expanding by purchasing the fair lands. For more information on both schools, you can go to FAU.edu and FIU.edu. We are back in the FAU locker room. We are back with Frank Fort, a broadcasting legend here in South Florida, to talk about 
why this rivalry, FIU, FAU, is called the Shula Bowl. Can you please shed light on those younger millennials as to who, <laughs> Don, who Don Shula is and why this is the Shula Bowl? Don Shula, winningest coach in National Football League history. Uh, he, of course, coached the Dolphins back in the day. Perfect season. Had the perfect season All in 1972. That. One of his assistant coaches back then was Howard Schnellenberger, who, of course, coached at University of Miami, and then came here to FAU and began the football program. In fact, the field out there is now named after Howard Schnellenberger. They have a statue. They have him. a statue yes. as well. So Schnellenberger started this program. Well, as a favor to Howard Schnellenberger, Don Shula got involved in the local rivalry, and, and Schnellenberger said, can we call it something using your name? And that's how the Shula Bowl the name was kind of born and it stuck. Yeah. And on the opposite side of the ball at FIU, you Correct. had Don Strzok, who was his backup quarterback, Shula's backup quarterback. So Shula touches right. both teams. So when Howard, both... when Howard and Don were coaching each team, yeah. you know, Shula, it was a natural connection there to Don Shula. Yeah, and, it, and it's crazy that there was a connection to Shula for both coaches that launched the program. Correct. Here, Schnellenberger Schnell here at FAU and uh, Don Strzok at FIU. There'll be a quiz later. There, there is going to be a quiz, but for now, you've been dismissed. All right, we're moments away from the game, and the trash talking has begun. Let's check out and see what students from both schools predict for tonight's game. Uh, FAU 35-14. Okay. Um, at least a 25 point win. You know, I'm going to blow them out. <laughs> Straight out the water. <laughs> a blowout? Why do you think that? Oh, because we get out of mud. We oh. gas. Oh, okay. Straight heat. Oh, straight heat. Fire flame. Flame. FAU's going to win for sure. Um, FIU has nothing on us, so we're going to win. <laughs> I'm thinking 52-0. Um, FAU up. 52-0? Um, yeah. Why? Because FIU is trash. FIU's trash? Oh, my God. Also, um, shout out to my line brother, John Mitchell. Plays on the team. Plays so. on the team. Okay, yeah, go, go Mitchell. Yeah, go Mitchell. Well, I think our Panthers have been doing so great. We've been working so hard. Um, our coaches are so dedicated, and our players are very dedicated, and I think we're going to do it. We're going to kill it uh, because we've been working and practicing, and all our friends are going to be here to cheer them on, and we're so excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, do you have a score in mind? Uh, I'm thinking... Uh, 17 10. Oh, that's yeah. modest. Okay. Yeah, you know me. You know, I gotta stay humble. Humble, humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we Panthers you know. are. We're humble. Jay is one of our interns here at the CW South Florida. Okay. You're an FIU Panther. Absolutely. So yeah. I know where this is gonna go. Tell me, FIU versus FIU, who's gonna win? FIU has it in the bag all day, every day. FIU. We're gonna be on their territory, but we're gonna shut it down. Straight up. Kyle. This is a first. You went to FAU as an undergrad, president yep. of SGA FAU, right? Yep, yep, I was president there. And now you are an FIU law student. Tell me, FIU versus FAU, are you torn? What's happening? So this is a tough game for me. You know, I'm really excited, but you know, it's a tough one. I went to FAU for undergrad. I'm at FIU Law now, so it's gonna be a tough decision, but I'm really excited to see the game. Yeah, uh, do you have any predictions of the score for tonight's game? Ooh, it's gonna be tough. I, I can't give anything away, but I, I gotta recommend you gotta be there. Yeah, it's gonna be electrifying, right, you would say? Oh, it's gonna be an amazing game. You can't miss it. All right, so FIU versus FAU is happening in a couple of moments. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, 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 we're starting. Wait, right now. Is, who that is that a bye week? I think yeah, it's a bye week. I, I thought this was a bye week. Oh, it's a yeah. bye week. Oh, okay. So if we're playing no one, you know, what do you, FIU's going to win, right? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, pretty much, because they don't exist. So. Yeah, steamroll. Yeah. yeah, FIU by a million. That is all. That is all. That is all. That's all. That's all. That's all for our Shula Bowl pregame edition of Inside South Florida. Remember, you can catch brand new episodes of Inside South Florida Saturdays at noon, 7 p.m., and Sundays at 3 p.m. I, I jotted all that down. I, okay, I good. I you, think I got it. Yeah, you, sh you should know that by yeah. now. And make sure you follow us on social media. We're on all the platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at SFLCW. Melissa Marrero is on Instagram as well. Kirk Jimenez as well, Twitter, Instagram, you Yes, whatever. all over, all the social media platforms. But all right, enough about us, they're ready to kick off. <laughs> yes, enjoy the game.